Hello and welcome to the latest video in the iNav 2020 for Beginners series. Now, if you haven't watched any of the videos, uh, don't start here, start back there. I talk about how to set it up and go through all the basics. And the series is aimed at those pilots who've never done iNav before. But in the last video, I did the maiden of that particular model and talked about auto trim and auto tune. And I've just updated this brain dart, which is a ZOHD dart with a brain FPV flight controller in it. Again, you can watch me build this, I'll put a link to that series down below as well. And with 2.5 on there, it was time to kind of re-go through that process and thought, perfect, it's a great time for me to kind of show and document how that works. So if you've done your maiden flight and it's all gone great and you've tried to return to home and that kind of work and you've got it so that it cruise throttle, it flies straight and level in things like angle mode, you're in a great place. In this video, I'll show you what I do next. And then once this stuff's done, then you kind of uh, away you go, really. Now, very, very quickly, let me talk about some of the terms. Now, auto trim uh, moves the servos into the position so that in manual mode or acro mode, the plane flies straight and level. One of the dangers that I see with new pilots getting into iNav is because angle and horizon mode are auto leveling, so the plane is automatically combating any uh, unexpected movement because the control surfaces are, are wrong. Uh, as soon as you turn into manual mode, there'll usually be an extreme uh, tilt or a bit of pitch or something will happen. Uh, usually it's a roll uh, that you'll get and uh, you'll crash. So I would definitely recommend if you've got it flying already, trim the controls and it just will make it uh, better if you then f decide to try acro later on. Auto tune is a little bit more involved. Auto tune is going to change the PIFF settings proportional integral feed forward. You don't need to worry about what those are, although I do have a video that explains it, on the flight controller. And different planes have different PIF settings. Now, this also works as well with things like multi-rotors. So again, always read the documentation before you get too far into this. But I thought what I'd do is kind of go through and show you what I've done here. To only show you where it is by default, when I've freshly set up, I now have 2.5 whatever, uh, but also what it looks like after we've been through the process. So let's start with the basics and start with auto trim, servo auto trim, first of all. So with servo auto trim, the first thing we need to do is to set up both of these modes on the radio and also in iNav so that we can set them up. I would usually add them onto channel seven and eight within the radio, have a switch for auto trim and a switch for auto tune. And that way they're, they're separate switches. I don't have to worry about anything else or setting up any other particular kind of mixes on the radio. Just those two switches and their only job is to either initiate servo auto trim or the auto tune process. Again, go into iNav and set up the positions of the switches for the two modes, servo auto trim and auto tune, and then you're set. Now I thought it might be interesting to just plug the model into iNav and show you how everything is before we start messing about. So here we can see the middle channel positions for both of the outputs for servos three and four, are at 1500. That's the default middle channel position and we'll definitely need to move those because the way it works is, as well as the motor trying to turn the prop, it's also trying to spin the model in the opposite direction. If we look at the pit tuning, this is what the defaults look like. So proportionals of two, integrals of six and feed forward of 80, 124 and 60. So that is where we're starting. Remember those numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is to launch the plane and get up to a reasonable altitude. I would normally do this in angle mode because of course by this point, if you've been following the series, your plane flies straight and level at cruise throttle and doesn't lose altitude because you've got the pitch set up perfectly. Because the plane is pretty much flying itself at this point, and again, make sure you're doing this on a nice calm day would be my advice. When it's flying straight and level, initiate the servo auto trim and just fly straight and level for a couple of seconds and that servo auto trim will then be saved into the flight controller. Now the way I check that is I then pop it into manual mode and just make sure that there isn't any horrendous movement from the model and if that feels about right then I will bring it home, land it 
and then disarm it and disarm it will save those new mid channel positions onto the flight controller and we can see that in a minute. Once that part's done, then we can do the next bit, which is auto-tune. Now, auto-tune, there is a little bit more involved in auto-tune. Go and definitely read all the documentation. There are a couple of things that you can change, although, to be honest, I didn't change any of it. I just kind of went for it as it was uh, with the defaults in iNav 2.5 for the Brain FPV system. So make sure that you have got the server auto trim done, make sure that everything else is working perfectly. This is probably one of the last things that I would do. Now the process for this is pretty straightforward. You're going to uh, fly, get to a decent altitude, uh, make sure you're in a big area for this. You need to make sure you've got lots and lots of room. Flick into auto-tune and a default set of PIFFs will be saved onto your model. Now they'll be uh, designed uh, to be a very safe starting point and they'll make the model feel really sluggish. Then what you need to do is to move the control to its extremes left and right. I would normally do this in horizon mode myself and as you're doing that just keep going going now you do each control on its own so i would do the aileron or roll and keep going and keep going initially it'll feel really mushy and over time it will get better and better and better once that starts to feel really good then do the pitch and again you're going from the maximum to the minimum if you start to lose altitude or fly too far away then just pause it for a second just kind of uh, bring it and fly it back so that you're in a safe area again and continue the process the trick with auto-tune is don't stop when you start thinking, oh, this actually feels really good. Keep the auto-tune turned on as the mode and just keep flying. It'll say in the on-screen display you're in auto-tune. Keep going and going well past where the model feels really nice. And then, once you're happy with that, then keep auto-tune on for another couple of goes. You really can't overdo auto-tune. Then once you're completely happy, then turn auto-tune off and bring it into land. Disarm the craft, and then what you want to do is hold the sticks in this position on the radio, and that will then save the new PIDs onto the flight controller, and that is the auto-tune done. A pro tip would be, I always, using the on-screen stick commands, go and have a look at what the new PIFFs are in the on-screen display in case by some weird accident it hasn't been saved down to the model. And I've got that recording of my on-screen display that I can refer to if I look back in iNav and see nothing's changed. So while we're talking about the results, let's see what actually changed. First of all, let's go into the outputs tab and have a look at the midpoints of the servos. If you remember before, each of those were 1500, the default middle position for those servos in iNav. And the cool thing is in here, you can see that they've moved quite a bit. One's gone to 1455 and the other one's gone to 1604 and that is to combat that torque that is being exerted on the model because of the motor turning and turning the prop on the back and that's pretty normal you kind of expect that kind of trim anyway if we look at the PIFF settings they've also changed too so here you can see the proportionals gone up quite a lot uh, both uh, on roll and pitch and then you can see the integrals increased a little bit as well and the feed forward has changed to touch two and again these are not super ideal i potentially could tweak around with these change the way that it feels and uh, make sure that i'm happy with stuff the only ones that i don't tend to mess around with too much are the feed forward element if you want the model to be a little bit more reactive you can increase them slightly um, but for me i tend to reduce the p gains and um, kind of keep the i gains more or less where they are but everyone has their own particular way of doing it but if you're not bothered about the PIFF setup stuff, this auto tune will get you really close. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that wondered what the next thing was after your maiden flight. Those are the two things that I do once you've got the servo auto trim done and once you've got the auto tune done and saved, then you're in a really good place. Last little tip I'll give you before you finish with this bit of the series, I'd go into iNav and do both a dump and diff in the CLI and save those files out to somewhere and keep them safe because that is now 
the reference settings for this model and if you upgrade it I know in the future you could save yourself the whole servo auto trim stuff by plugging those numbers back in uh, but always be careful when upgrading iNav occasionally they'll tweak things about how the PIF controller works so plugging those numbers back in might not be a great idea but again check the release notes as iNav is updated Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.